Have you ever wanted to create one of those cool add-ins in Excel, but you didn't know where to start, how to create one? Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this beginner's VBA lesson, I'm going to show you how you can create your first ever add-in. And I've got a special bonus for you at the end of this video. So let's get started. Right, creating an add-in is really cool. Why would we even want to create an add-in? Well, there's many reasons. An Excel add-in is basically exactly like an Excel workbook, but it's just modified slightly so that we can install it in a different way. When we install an add-in, it becomes available for all the workbooks we open, and that's kind of a nice feature. So if you've created something that you want to use across multiple workbooks, a feature, a tool, a kit, an add-in, a special function, or something like that, and you wanna make it available for every single workbook, creating an add-in is the best way to go, right? So add-ins are new functionality in Excel. We simplify complex tasks, so they can be functions or they can be tools. I've got add-ins that, uh, for example, an AI add-in that I created that helps use the technology of AI throughout all the workbooks. So there's many different types of things you can do with add-ins that you can't do with a regular workbook. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a simple add-in today. I'm gonna show you every single step. And then what I'm gonna show you is a little bit more complex one, and I've got a little bonus for you at the end. So let's get started right away. We're gonna start with a brand new workbook. So I'm gonna click on a new workbook here. And what we wanna do is we wanna start right off inside the VBA editor, because that's where the magic is gonna happen. And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna create a simple function where if I have a date, I wanna determine someone's birthday. And I wanna create a special function just to do that. For example, if I've got a date here of let's say 415, let's say 79, I want to know that person's birthday based on that date. So I want to enter a function something like equals, and then let's just say something like calculate age. I want that function to do that. And I want that function to be available for every single workbook. So let's write the function, make sure it works. Then what we're going to do is we're going to convert it into an add-in. So the first thing we want to do is go into the developer's option here, right? So we've got a tab here. If you don't have that, you can click customize the ribbon and make sure that it is selected here. Once you're there, you want to select visual basic. So we're going to do a visual basic and that's going to get us into the visual basic editor, which you see right here. So I've got two workbooks open, the one that we're working on in a sample. So we're going to focus on book three. So that's the one I want to create. Now to do that, I want to create a special function. So I want to create a brand new module for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do insert and then module. Now we can give that module a name if we want. We can just call this birth date function. And so what I would like to do inside this is create a function. So we're gonna start writing a function. I'm gonna call it function. And then I'm gonna call it calculate age. Calculate age. And then I'm gonna use the birth date as a date. So I'm gonna type in birth date as a date because that's the information that we're going to need and I want to return it as an integer. I want a whole number, so integer. So inside this function, we're gonna dimension the age, which is what we want to extract, age as also an integer. Very good, so now how do we get that? So what the user's gonna do is they're going to enter the birth date, the function, and then it'll return the age of that person. So we can simply use the date difference function to do that. So we can use age is equal to the date diff and the date different is the interval string so i want to get the years so i want to know the difference in years so i'm going to use the yyy which will return the number of years and it's going to be based on the difference between the birth date of what the user entered and the difference of the current date so we're going to use date so that's essentially going to extract our age however we do need to make a differentiation if the birth date is later in the year we're going to need to deduct one year so how do we know that well let's just check on the current date if the current date so we can use date is less than what i want to do is i want to determine the birth date of the current year so their birth date but i want to use the current year so how do we do that well, we can use the date serial for that which will break down the date into year month and day so we're going to use the year of the current date so that's exactly what i want i want to extract the year of the current date but i want to select the month of the actual birth date the month of the birth date and also i want to select the day of the birth date so basically if it's later in the year i want to deduct one year so birth 
date. And then we're going to close that up. And then what do I want to do? Then the age is equal to the age minus one. So we're going to deduct one year if the current date is less than birth date. So that's pretty much all we have to do. And then what we need to do is we just need to use calculate to return the function. Calculate age is equal to the age. So let's test this out now that we have that. So I'm going to use equals. Here we're going to use calculate age. And there's the function that comes up. And we're looking for this birth date right here. And we're just going to simply close the parentheses. And it's going to return 45. Now currently, the current date that I'm dealing with is April 24th. So if the birthday is, let's say, on the 25th, so if I change this to 25 here, we will see that the age changes to 44. So that means the current date is less than the birth date because today's the 24th of April, so we change to 44. And if it's on the day, so if the current birth date, it's gonna change to 45. And that's exactly what I want. So our function's working perfectly. Now what I want to do is I would like to convert this into an add-in to be used in any workbook that I want. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing what we're gonna use, we're gonna save it as an XLAM file, which is an add-in file. That's one of two types that we can use, and it's also the most common. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use save as, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look down here, and I'm gonna look all the way down to something called Excel add-in. And I'm just gonna give this a name called calculate age and then add-in. And there we go. So we can save it in the add-ins. The most common place is in the add-ins, but you can save it in any folder. So that's exactly where we're going to save it. And we're going to click save. Great. So what's that? Now that it's been saved, we don't necessarily need this workbook three. So that's not important right now. So we can close that out. And we don't need to save the changes because we've actually saved it as an add-in. So we can then close it out. So now what we're going to do is I want to add that add-in now. So to do that, what we can do is we can go, there's a few places to do it. So we can go into the developer, if you have that, and we're going to look for Excel add-ins. And it's going to launch this. If you want to learn a little bit more about the Excel add-ins, you can also go to File, Options here, and then we can go to Add-ins. And it's going to give us information about the individual add-ins. So Excel add-ins is what we want to do. So we see the location of some current add-ins that you have. And if you select on it, it gives us some information about the existing add-in, which is great. We have not yet installed it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click go. It's going to take us to the same place that we were just in. So I'm going to browse for this add-in. And we see that we have the same location add-ins and we have calculate age that we just created. Now it's only looking for those files that are XLAM, XLA, or XLL. Those are the extensions for the add-in. So we're going to select Calculate Age and we're going to click OK. And now we're going to click OK. And now if we take a look back inside our VBA editor, we see that we have Book 2, we have Book 3, and we have the Project Excel add-in. So we see that it's loaded in here as an add-in file. Now, of course, we can lock this file and I'll show you one more time, but let's take a look. So we have book two here and I'm going to open up a brand new workbook here. And I want to see that our function actually works inside this brand new workbook. So again, once again, I'm going to put in a date here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to use here equals calculate age. And we see that we've got it available to us and it's working just fine. So we see that our add-in is now working automatically in a brand new workbook. So whatever workbook we open, it is going to be available to us, which is quite helpful. Now, you may also want to protect your add-in. If you're distributing this, you can also protect it. So to do that, we have the project properties. So what we can do is we can right click here and we can go into the VBA project properties. Once inside there, you can also add in protection. Now, don't forget the password. But if you want to lock it, you'll select here and you'll enter a simple password. We'll just use one, two, three and one, two, three. And we're going to click OK. Very good. So now if we've saved it, now let's take a look back. If you want to uninstall your add-in, we can go back into the developer, Excel add-ins, and we can simply unselect it and click OK. And what that's going to do is unselect it and the add-in will be gone. Notice that we only have book two and book four available to us. If I try to use it, it's going to give us the location. That function is no longer available. If I try to do equals calculate, right, it's not going to show up here because it doesn't exist. And so we've uninstalled the add-in properly. Now, if we want to add it again, we simply just need to go to the developer, Excel add-ins, and of course, we would select it from this list that is now here. We can click OK, and we see that it is now available to us. So we have the 
add in back. And we go back into the VBA editor, we take a look at our add-in. When I select it, we can see that it is no longer available and we have to actually enter the password to open it up. So that's very important. And we can see once the password is entered, we now have full access of it. We wanna make sure that after changing the property, so when we see the password and we have it, we wanna make sure that any changes that we make we must also save the added. Make sure you select on the individual project, wherever, anywhere, and make sure that you do save it so that any changes are always added. If we uninstall the add-in before making those changes, they will not take effect. And also, since the add-in is simply an Excel workbook, we can also store information inside a sheet. So if we see here, we've got our Microsoft Excel objects, We've got sheet one, we can view the code, we can view the object. However, if we take a look at this workbook, I wanna be able to view that. If we see that it says, is add-in true? We're gonna take a look. Once again, I wanna select the workbook of the add-in and I wanna store some information on a sheet. We can actually do that. But right now it says, is add-in true? Which is automatic. If I change this to false, I'm gonna take a look at it. This is actually our add-in. This is actually sheet one of our add-in. So we can just, Remove that here. So here's our add-in. We can store anything we want on the sheet. However, if I try to save this, it's gonna tell me this extension cannot be used with the selected file type. Change the file extension in the text box or select a different file type. So basically what it's telling me is I can't save it inside this. I need to save it into a different file type, which I really don't want to do. So it's gonna ask me to save a different file type, which I really don't want to do, but it's great for storing information. Maybe I want some license information here. Maybe I want to store some user information, but I can store it here on sheet one anywhere I want. But I need to make sure that before I save those changes, I need to return back to this. I need to go into the add-in. I need to select the workbook. And I need to double click here where it says, if I scroll down inside the properties. Now, if you don't have the properties available, you would just select the properties directly from here or use F4. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to is add-in and we're just gonna either double click it or just change it to true. What that's gonna do is automatically, it's going to hide that sheet. Notice it's gone, right? You can't see the workbook anymore. And what we can do is we can now select inside, anywhere inside, here's fine and save it, that will save the changes. So the sheet one data is there, but it is hidden. So in other words, we can't view the object. For a normal workbook, I can view the object, which is the sheet. However, for the add-in, I cannot unless I change the type. Remember, once again, we go into the workbook, we see is add-in, we change it to false, we do whatever we want on sheet one or sheet two or whatever, then we change the is add-in back to true before saving it. So that's very important, we can protect it. Very good, so that's pretty much all we have to do. I wanted to share something special with you and make sure you give you a download because I really appreciate your continued support. First of all, if you have not, make sure you do subscribe to our channel. I've got incredible beginners, VBA basic every single Saturday, along with comprehensive application development with free template downloads every Tuesday. So make sure you get subscribed, join our Patreon for additional workbook. I've got something really cool, something that I've used a lot in my workbooks. And it was actually inspired by a training that I did very long ago called three Excel calendars. In this particular training, we did a form-based pop-up date picker. We also did a shape-based pop-up date picker and a cell-based date picker. This one's just in cell calendar. So this one, the form base is one of the more stable ones. And the idea is that when you wanna use something like this in a workbook, you've gotta go into the code. You've gotta copy the form. You've gotta copy the code. And I wanted something very easy so that if you have an add-in with this form base, you could use this anywhere. And that's where the idea was born. Actually, today I created it to have something like this available in any workbook you open without using any code at all. And that's exactly what I created for you. So let me share, I'm gonna close this as we don't really need this. And let me share with you the add-in that I've created for you. So we're going to go into the developers once again, and we're going to go into Excel add-ons. And we now can browse for that. And I've got it right here. It's called Date Picker Add-in in Excel. And of course, it's yours free. I'll include the link down below and I'll show you how it works. Let's go ahead and take a look. So now we've got our workbook. This will just open up a brand new workbook. And the idea is you now see you have this date picker. It's either on or it's off. So you can toggle. Let's pin this for a second here. And so we can either toggle this on or off. So if it's on, that's fine. Now you see, let's just take column I. When I select here, nothing's going to happen, which is fine. However, when I change this to a date format, that calendar is automatically going to pop up. 
and pretty much any date format. So I can just click short date or long date and you can see now here it's automatically coming up which is kind of a helpful and it's going to be only those cells that have a date format. We can see the date format right here. If I were to select another cell that's not a date format it won't and this is kind of a nice and as you can see there's zero code inside this workbook. If we go into the developer and we go into the visual basic we see that we got book five open. In book five here we can close everything else here and in book five there is nothing. There's no sheet code. There's no modules. The user form is not there. It's located right here inside our date picker. And now to create this is a little bit more complicated. Remember, we're focused on here in basic. This is a basic training, not a detailed. If you do want to learn how I created this, of course, I'll be happy to create a full training video on that. But I wanted to make sure you had this bonus. So all you need to do is download this. Now I'm going to give you the link for this. So if you look down below in the YouTube video, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll include a download link. Once you get this is downloaded. I'm going to recreate this for you because I want you to show. So we're going to copy the Dropbox link and let's say you get this downloaded. So I'm just going to go into my browser. I'm going to paste this. I'm going to change this to a one. That means it's automatically going to download so that I can recreate and I want to show that to you. Okay, so I'm going to select inside of my downloads folder. Now, very, very important for Excel, especially if you're using 365. You need to right click before you install it and you need to let's go up here. It's out of the site. I need to right click it here. Go to properties after it's been downloaded and click unblock. Very, very important. If you're on a Windows PC and using 365, very important step before installing it. Then click OK. Then all you need to do is go into any Excel here. Remember in the developers, if you don't have one, Excel add-ins, browse for it and then browse for whatever location you had it. In fact, it'll probably be in your downloads, so you look in your downloads, but make sure you do the unblock macro. Also, what I like about this feature is the ability to turn it off and on. So if I click date picker and I disable it, it's no longer going to work here. So it's kind of a nice feature. And if we turn it on here and it's going to do that. Now I do have trainings on toolbars. I've got training on date pickers. So I thought this would be a nice add in for you so that you can download it. Just look for the word download in the YouTube description. Make sure you download it, unblock the macros and enjoy using it. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, and I do appreciate your continued support right here. Thank you so much and we'll see you next week.